Okay, guys, welcome to our documentary of American colonial town of Vulcanshire. Indeed, there are many roles in towns such as these in North America. A total of eight we're going to cover in this video. The yeah. first one was slaves. The slaves. They existed in every colony. Their living conditions were poor. Originally, they signed contracts to work for certain periods of time until they were granted with future freedom. However, this ended up not being the case later on. Not all slaves, typically most, were African American. Some were Native American. They were not paid for the work they did, and they were sold to other slave owners eventually. So they would may have been in one plantation and then moved to another, separated from their family. The next role in the colonial village of Vaultonshire was the frontier settler. Frontier settlers generally constructed a farm by clearing land to harvest crops and other such goods. They bit they built homes and fences to claim their land and to keep animals and other such unwanted visitors from it. <clears throat> Many worked from dawn to dusk, creating food for the colony to live off of. In the spare time, they were hunters and trappers, selling their fur and meat to the local merchant to make surplus money to help buy whatever the family needed. There were a few furnish furnishings in their homes. Many did not even have beds to sleep on. They slept on the hard floor with maybe a blanket to cover their cold bodies. <laughs> yes, nay. Next is the slave owner, otherwise known as plantation owners. <laughs> Many were known as Tidewater aristocrats as they were very rich and many thought they didn't work hard to get there as they owned many slaves. Hundreds of, actually, of slaves and servants at their beck and call to work for them and get the crop pulled in. Actually, however, most took an active role in business operations, making sure everything flowed smoothly, no one stole, people were working, that sort of thing. Some took advantage of their ownership of slaves and felt it was their right to abuse their slaves, like poor Thomas here, getting abused by this man screaming and this hitting him with a whip. This deranged slave owner. Yes, look at him with his hat and yelling. Maniacal face. And the Deadly whip. smirk. And the ball at the end of his whip. Yes, yes. Very abusive. <laughs> Let's see, this could be caused by a lack of communication if there was a language barrier. barrier. If it was an immigrant slave, they may not have spoken English causing the slave owner to think he was uneducated and not not worth anything beyond a strong back and, you know, just a farmhand. Labor's force. Mm-hmm. He should have formed a union. Unfortunately, they didn't know what a union was union. at the time. No anyway, knew. owning slaves caused them to be known as the Tidewater Aristocrats because they have had such a great economic growth from owning slaves because you could cover more land than a simple frontier settler with his little farm. Anyway, next up is the indentured servant. Indentured servants were used for planting or fishing. They harvest cash crops and the servants would be supplied with a room and board while working with their master. If a woman got pregnant during her time serving her um, master, she would have um, she would have extra years added to her service time. Next up, after the servant fishing, is the mother. <clears throat> Ignore these other ones. What did the mother do, Wendy? Mothers had many more children than modern women women did today. They had an average of nine children, but the number of children who died was greater in the south. Usually, the mothers didn't nurse their own children, and women between the ages of 20 and 45 were characterized by motherhood. The cooking equipment they used consisted of an iron pot or pan, a 
and food was served on wooden platters and the clothing was made of wool cloth. Wool. <laughs> yes, yes, Patrick. Next up is the Might Merchant. And the merchants. They had the easiest life in the entire settlement. Trade with excess goods in other towns and they treated what they had extra, such as their food, their clothes, guns and ammunition, and other knickknacks. Many grew rich easily, since there was little competition. Next up is the colonial official. <clears throat> colonial officials. They were represented... They represented the crown of England. The owners of the colonies granted land to people willing to venture to the new world, usually given their land due to influence of British royalty, like them being old and debts. And finally in our tour of this colonial village is the life of the Native American. <laughs> Many tribes live outside colonies to grow closer to them and form alliances and trade, that sort of thing, between two peoples. But Native Americans in regular life collect nuts and berries and hunted animals for food. <coughs> Their clothes were made from buffaloes, rabbits, buffalo. deer, whatever they had around. But the buffalo and rabbits were far more popular, but many regions didn't have access to such luxuries. There's where the merchants came in. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, good connection there. Music accompanied them in a daily lifestyle, ranging from the big drums. No, no, Patrick they didn't have beatboxing. Too bad. Probably. To the mighty flute. Such a simple thing, but such nice music. They also mastered many arts, such as pottery, basket weaving, and sewing. Many fine trades at colonies took advantage of. Their houses were not the usual teepees many, uh, many ways they were expressed as. That's more towards Indian tribes in the plains. Just a representation. Yes, yes. Of recognition. Yes, yes, for people to recognize, yes, yes. Actually, in North Carolina, where Vulcanshire lives, this colony, they had small buildings made of wood and reeds. Much like regular colonial buildings. Except much smaller and trashier. Indeed. Made they didn't have sometimes. many furnishings like beds and such. They only had like maybe a mat to sleep upon and maybe a stool to sit on. To lullaby the child. That sort of thing. Okay, that was our documentary on colonial life in colonial America. Hope you learned a lot and hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.